I've never really bothered with the GPS in FSX until now, uh, mostly because it's just too fiddly to operate with the mouse and uh, I suppose it just didn't occur to me you could operate it with the keyboard or with joystick buttons but in fact you can bind all the GPS buttons to keystrokes or button presses and so I thought about making some kind of custom keypad for it with the idea of running the GPS on an external monitor and of course as soon as I looked into this um, I realized that the number of GPS functions 17 is pretty much the same number of keys on a numeric keypad so the obvious idea was to get a add-on numeric keypad and use that so that's what I've done uh, so I've created a layout that makes some kind of sense and made labels for all the keys and uh, it's a simple matter to bind these keys to the FSX functions and the real problems are a logistical one as you do need to make sure you're not losing any other functions just as an aside here the keypad uh, will be interchangeable for the panel mount GPS and the portable one they do share pretty much the same functions although the keys do have different labels so in my case I use the numeric pad for a few things so moving around in SLU mode editing EZCA cameras and for running FS recorder playback some of these are mutually exclusive so for example I'm never in SLU mode when I'm running FS recorder so there's no conflict for EZCA all I did was I stuck with the default key mappings except that I went and added the control key as well so for example the global enable key instead of being numeric keypad 3 key it's now control numeric 3 and so on now I've only found two small anomalies with using a keypad this way. First the clear or quit button has a press and hold function to back out to the main nav screen and uh, this doesn't seem to work when you map it to a key. And the other thing is that this particular keypad has a backspace key and uh, you do need to be careful what you map that key to. As luck would have it I tried mapping it to the enter key which caused a problem with entering airport codes because uh, in this context FSX insists on treating it as a backspace key. I just swapped it with another key and everything's okay but you might need to do a bit of tinkering. The simplest way to experiment is just to bring up the key mapping dialog in FSX and uh, just look at what FSX sees when you press each key. This keypad also has a, I think an unusual numlock key that operates independently of the main keyboard and of any other keypad plugged in so that's actually quite handy because uh, it means the GPS functions don't stop working if you change numlock on the keyboard and that's it really. I have the keyboard mounted with a bit of velcro on the monitor that's running the GPS but it works just as well if you run the GPS as a pop-up. You can operate everything from the keypad and if you label it up properly it's pretty realistic. So let's go for a quick ride and just see that in operation. We're at Orcas Island here, the weather's a bit rubbish today and uh, just dial in a direct flight to Israel's farm and then basically follow the GPS. Let's not forget there's a few hills between us and Israel's and uh, in this visibility we need to be a little bit cautious about just following a blind course. Uh, we can dial in the terrain button to get a rough idea of where we're headed but uh, as we can't see so well maybe we should change the plan a bit and uh, dial in a direct course to Skagit instead and then we'll redirect from there which uh, ought to put us on the river between the hills. So we've dialed that in and uh, we're on the way. Now we might want to look up the airport and the radio info for Skagit. Press the nearest button, select the right airport, and then we can just page through the airport information. And there it is. There's a lot more the GPS can do, of course, but the main thing is it's now all accessible without any cryptic keystrokes, and most importantly, without the mouse.